Well, hello and welcome to the upstairs candy wallpapered hallway of the dollhouse for another reading from of The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for October 8th, the day of high romance. And here at the top of the page is a uh, visual representation of the day of high romance where we have us a picture of, or an illustration if you like, what looks like a WWF championship wrestling belt. That's right, at least viewed from the inside. I know it's not quite as glaring or haughty as a, uh, a WWF wrestling belt, but hey, that's the only thing I can really savvy it is. But hey, that's not necessarily important altogether. Uh, what the visual representational image is, and maybe we can put together uh, through the reading what it's supposed to signify, but like I said, not important. What is important is it's October 8th, and it's someone's birthday today. That's right. So if it's your birthday and it's October 8th, I just want to say happy birthday. That's what's important. Uh, but if this video finds you late, you know, days, weeks, maybe even months, well, I hope you had a happy birthday. That's right. That's what's important. But for everyone else who's just joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate the October 8th birthday, I just want to say hello and welcome and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before we dive in with the redirect, and something we like to do around these here parts, and that's roll some dice. That's right. This is the Diecast, a birthday broadcast. So we like to roll dice around these here parts, but we do it more uh, specifically for synchronicity's sake, that's right. Oh, and we rolled us some doubles, that's right. A four and a four for an eight. Straight to jail for the day of high romance, that's right. Now, uh, some of you may be wondering what synchronicity is, and it's just you getting out in the world and letting the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you do that by keeping your eyes out for these numbers, and when you see them, chasing them down. Now, you don't necessarily have to go with the numbers I rolled for you. I mean, the intention is there for that. But, uh, you know, you can roll your own. And it's probably ideal that you take your own paradise with you when you go out looking for your numbers because you need to uh, figure out some directions to go. So you want to ascribe directional values to number sets, you know, north, south, east, east, west. And you also want to roll dice to find out how long you go down those particular paths. And when you reach the end of those uh, time limits there, well, you just stop, compose yourself, and look for your numbers. That's right. And maybe you don't see them. You know, that happens. The universe can't be throwing that stuff at you all the time. But in those particular circumstances, well, you just look for things that are maybe out of place, a little unusual. Maybe you see somebody in a, in a hot pink shirt when everybody else is, I don't know, wearing beige. Or maybe there's a big old bouquet of, of roses, you know, for the day of high romance. That would make a little bit of sense. So you know what? Maybe you follow that person that's got the roses. Or, I don't know, maybe the number eight bus pulls up. That's right. Well, you know what? That's your number. Jump on. You know, I know a lot of us don't ride the bus but hey this is a day of high romance you got to get out there it's your birthday we gotta have some fun uh ride the bus you know and maybe you roll your dice to you find out hey you roll a number eight let's you know let's stick with it you roll the number eight so you go for eight minutes and maybe you pull up you get off um, on that next stop, the eight minute latest stop, and you find yourself in front of a building with a 44 in the address. And what is it? Well, it's a belt shop. How about that? It's And they got wrestling belts on clearance. How about that? Maybe they're $44. Who's to say? You got yourself the opportunity to buy a wrestling belt. That's right. Hey, that's what synchronicity is. Or could be, I don't know, some in some dimension, any of it. But that's what synchronicity is, as far as I understand. It's just the universe lining things up for you, putting them in your path. And, you know, maybe it's not so glaring. It's just little minutiae type things to show you it's with you on your path. But any of it, I think you get the idea. So let's get in with the birthday read, all right? Your a month is October. Your day is the 8th. And your sign is 14 to 16 degrees Libra. Of the Libra 2 period of the Zodiac specifically, and your quality and element is cardinal air. All right, October 8th, the day of high romance. All right. For those born on October 8th, life is a fabulous romantic adventure. They will give all for love, elevating it to a high plane, or they will have none of it. But it is not only the area of love to which their romantic feelings apply. Their souls can soar from the wonders of nature to the mysteries of outer space, from the mo movements of the sea to the rotation of the planets themselves. And those born in this day often have well-developed intellects also and are particularly sharp in their perceptions 
of human psychology. Yet many October 8 people have little insight into their own personality. And as they see it, they are simply attending to business, efficiently acting on what they have to do, while others stare in open-eyed amazement at their unusual antics. Within their family or social group, those born on this day are usually free spirits. And for this reason, their common sense and judgment are not always trusted, particularly by those who think themselves as highly practical. Yet October 8 people are good with money and able to run a family responsible and conscientious in discharging their obligations up to a point, it says with an exclamation point, for always the danger is present that they will be swept away to other worlds, sailing off into the beyond. Their experiential attitude to life recognizes few limitations and boundaries, and therefore they can get caught up in sheer sensationalism, in a thirst for excitement. It is not surprising that October 8 people can get themselves into all kinds of trouble, particularly in the emotional sphere. And their relationships are not only complex, but also occasionally hazardous. Uh, let's see. Here. They have a habit of getting involved with all manner of strange and sometimes questionable characters, but also, paradoxically, with people who are too nice and prove to be not at all right for them. Their interest in unusual people and faithful, even bizarre circumstances makes them prey to those who attempt to use them for selfish reasons and purposes. Yet somehow these brilliant October 8 butterflies always manage to escape their would-be captors and fly to yet another beautiful tower, or flower, rather. <laughs> they are deeply affected by their experiences, particularly feeling the grief and the pain caused by separation from a loved one. But they are also indestructible, perhaps because of their ability to key to the essence of things, to confront or be forced to confront them and emerge a wiser person. Thus, those born in this day may read and think a great deal, and often do, but ultimately their wisdom is derived from life experience, which they value more highly than anything else. In October 8 people must never lose a sense of their origins. There is a definite danger of power tripping attendant to this day, but either being carried away by authority or being tempted to climb social ladders, they only lead to unhappiness. And the happiness and stability of October 8 people is directly proportional to their ability to remain centered in their true self. And whatever dragons or monsters they encounter will have to be overcome, or perhaps transformed into companions and guides. Well, all right, how about that for a birthday breakdown? Highly romantic for the day of high romance. All right, so I had some notes that I uh, wrote down here, I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary, so let's dive in with the notes. All right, October 8th, the day of high romance. So life for you is a fabulous romantic adventure and you will give all for love and elevate it or have none of it uh, apparently anyhow <laughs> so you either take home that championship belt or you don't compete at all that's right uh, your romantic feelings also apply to many other areas of life as well uh, the reading says and uh, the wonders of nature chief among them it would seem anyhow so obviously the initial introduction, title notwithstanding, is highly romanticized uh, in and of itself, okay? And not to, to, not to poo-poo that, but uh, all of that idealized writing, uh, regardless how well it was written, uh, it really didn't relate all that much, at least in my mind. Nothing specific anyhow. Uh, so I'm glad that they pivoted into discussing uh, a perception into human psychology, uh, which made the breakdown all the more interesting as well as ironic, uh, claiming that you may not have much insight into your own personality, even though you have an interest in human psychology. 
Uh, and as a free spirit, your common sense may not be trusted despite having well developed intellect. I found that interesting. Uh, to which, I mean, it happens to the best of us, right? So hopefully you're able to have a sense of humor about that, not necessarily take it to heart. Uh, in, it's, it's assuming it even applies, right? Uh, or you're even aware of as much, uh, which it says you may not be, right? So despite thinking you are, in any event, wow. Uh, the irony is almost palpable in those areas. Uh, like you are, uh, and like you are reasonable and conscientious in discharging your obligations until you sail off into another world, it said. A uh, characteristic that would seem to carry over to people you meet and get involved with on the romantic level. Uh, and it says you're deeply affected by pain, but indestructible. And it's very interesting you're capable of keying to the essence of things. And I like that, even though that in itself is kind of highly romantic and it doesn't really say anything specific, right? Uh, you also may think and read a great deal, but your wisdom is ultimately gained from experience, uh, which you value above all else, the reading said. But happiness is proportional to stability, it also said. And uh, let's see here, what else they say? Remaining centered is important, right? Uh, which seems to be a state, uh, be in a state of back and forth flux for you, uh, if I'm to take what was related in the breakdown uh, is gospel in any event. Uh, to which, honestly, it sounds like you make a very interesting person to be around, uh, all things being equal. Uh, as a romantic view on life is its own form of unique optimism, even though it's completely different, I would argue. So in any event, like I said, very interesting breakdown today, uh, but that's been the breakdown. Uh, so let's dive in with your numbers and your planets. That's right. Those born on the 8th of the month are ruled by the number 8 and by the planet Saturn. And since Saturn carries a strong feeling of responsibility and an accompanying tendency toward caution, uh, limitation, and fatalism, the combination influence of this planet and Venus, which is Libra's ruler, can trigger an October 8 person's darker, more depressed, and discontented feelings toward relationships. And those ruled by number eight generally build up their lives and careers slowly and carefully. Although they are most often quite warm-hearted, those ruled by the number eight can present a cool and detached exterior. And sometimes a Saturn-Venus connection can indicate childhood difficulties with a parent of the opposite sex. All right, hey, what I have to say about your numbers and your planets. Let's get back into the notes. All right, here. The number eight in the constrictive planet Saturn opposed to the expansive planet Jupiter for strong feelings of responsibility, caution, limitation, and fatalism. Uh, coupled with Venus, the reading relates a cool and detached exterior despite being a warm-hearted individual, as well as affecting darker, more depressed feelings toward relationships. And it's interesting insofar as Venus rulerships tend to be associated with a focus toward romance, you know, high romance notwithstanding. Uh, perhaps it's still the case. My mind just doesn't go depressed and dark with that element, you know, all things considered. And this seems rather counter to a day of high romance, like I just said. Uh, but maybe that dark element is what gives you the desire to go so into the weeds with it conceptually, right? Who's to say? Anyway, that's what I'd say about your numbers and your planets. Let's dive in with your tarot. That's right, one of the more eclectic of the New Age metaphysical ideologies, but it's in the book, so let's see what it has to say. We don't necessarily have to take it home with us and, you know, start dealing out cards ourselves, but hey, let's see what card they give you. All right, the eighth card of the Major Arcana is Strength or Courage, which depicts a graceful queen taming a furious lion. And the queen symbolizes the female magician who can master rebellious energies and stands for moral as well as physical strength. And the card's positive attributes include charisma and a determination to succeed. And the negative qualities include complacency and the misuse of power. All right. What I have to say about your tarot. All right, strength and courage. The graceful queen taming furious lion for a mastering of rebellious energy and standing for moral 
physical strength. Charisma and determination are positives, complacency and misuse of power, the negatives. Uh, reconciling the ironic paradoxical dynamics I could see being a part of mastering rebellious energy. And uh, surprisingly enough, yesterday was the day of like rebellious nature, a defiant day of defiance, I think. But the rebelness gets drilled down on really hard. But it says you are a master of that. So it's interesting how the dynamics change from day to day. Uh, but I could also see complacency maybe leading to a meeting and falling for these people who take advantage of you and use you for their own selfish purposes, right? No judgment happens to the best of us, uh, and uh, but with high romance as an influence, kind of makes sense, right? You're going to fall for those people that you got the feelings for. Uh, but I can also see strength and courage as a fair representation and description of being a free spirit. And uh, despite your perhaps seeing that as a natural and intrinsic uh, quality, as, as basic as gravity, at least to you, to me I see that as a real risk, at least in, these, in this day and age. So it takes a lot of strength and courage to be a free spirit. Uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. I think it's uh, admirable. So in any event, that's what I'd say about your tarot. Let's dive in with your health. All right, your health. Those born on October 8 will not have so many problems with their physical health as with their psychological health, particularly in relation to their emotional experiences. They are particularly prone to depression and find it difficult to deal with grief, either attempting to ignore it or conversely allowing it to dominate their lives. October 8 people are extremely complex emotionally and therefore may find that psychological counseling can be helpful in keeping them on track. Aesthetic forms of physical exercise, particularly dancing, are recommended for October 8 people. And those born on this day must not put too much faith in extreme or unusual diets, and instead should ground themselves with earthy foods such as grains, bread, stews, and root vegetables. All right, hey, what I'd say about your health. Uh, here we go. I could put this in tiny print, so bear with me here. So many problems psychologically, but not necessarily in the health field, uh, apparently. That's a first, as far as I can recall. Uh, so um, it says you're uh, particularly prone to depression and grief, and I'd say that maybe makes sense for a high romantic, right? Psychological counseling is perhaps helpful, uh, but don't negate personal mindfulness and time to sit with things if therapy is outside of your price range, all right? Also, maybe try and be aware and self-reflective on emotional responses that you, might, you may or may not have. And, you know, ask yourself why you may have reacted that way after it happens. Um, even those knee-jerk responses, you know, take some time to reflect on that later, perhaps right after you have them. Uh, it, can it can prove insightful when you do that, um, at least I find. Uh, maybe you're already doing it and you still find yourself knee-jerking. I don't know, just keep up the practice, I would say, because I find myself doing the same thing. Uh, aesthetic exercise. Now that's a first. Uh, and see, uh, mindful, unusual diets. I mean, you know, high romantics get get into those idealistic ideas and uh, get excited about things that might not prove to be very fruitful. So yeah, get down to the basics. That's right. And it said, what did it say? Foods such as grains, breads, and stews, as well as root vegetables. Who's to say? They don't often get that specific. So maybe take note. And even that's been your health. Let's dive in with some advice. All right, some advice. Keep your path and move steadily forward. And learn to deal with distractions. Don't get sidetracked. Uh, use your wisdom to help yourself as well as others. Experiences are not only to be lived, but learned from as well. And beware of getting stuck. All right. Hey, uh, I wrote some stuff down for your advice, but it's in the book here because I ran out of space on the page. Let's get into it here. Move steadily forward on your path. All right. Even when you're down in the doldrums, I say, even if only if, if you only take a couple steps that day. All right. Mindful of distractions, practice putting them away or at least trying to do so. You can always give them time later. Right. 
and I recommend doing that. Yeah, just set aside time to focus on that on that garbage that's always on your mind, and then uh, try to try to put it away. I'm gonna get it some time later. You're gonna have your time. Let me have mine. All right. Uh, wisdom to help yourself and others, and your wisdom from such paradoxical experience is probably worth its weight in gold. All right. And at the very least, uh, make time. Or, or at the very least, it's going to make some really captivating stories. That's what I have to say. You approach life in a highly romantic uh, way of being. The way that you perceive the world is going to be very interesting. At least I would think. And so you're going to make for some captivating stories, regardless of what you take from what wisdom you take from those experiences. I think that's what I was trying to say. It's a uh, really tiny, r tiny print there. So I had to, I had to try to make use of what I could with the with my mind there thanks <laughs> like i said let's get on with your meditation that's right let's take the energy down here move on from the advice into your meditation all right <clears throat> astrology is the psychology of the universe hmm. once again astrology is the psychology of the universe I'd say that's apt for a highly romantic day. That's right. But hey, I'm not going to try and break it down for you or give you my spin on it. It's your birthday. It's your meditation. That's right. You're going to get something from it when you meditate on yourself. Once again, astrology is the psychology of the universe. All right. With your meditation in the can, as it were, let's move on to your strengths and weaknesses. That's right. All right. We're going to do the heavy lifting here now. Your strengths, your imaginative you're romantic, naturally, and you're capable. Ooh, that's a good one. And your weaknesses. Oh, you ready? You're flighty, emotionally label. L-A-B-I-L-E. I'm not sure what that word is. Never seen it. Uh, labile, perhaps. And power absorbed. Interesting. I don't know what to make of that. I don't take notes for the strengths and weaknesses. I kind of kind of go with those off the seat of my pants there, but emotionally lab, labile, <laughs> labile, and power absorbed. I saw flighty. That one makes sense. That one can be dealt with. Or maybe you don't even want to deal with that because you don't you don't want to sacrifice that high romantic ideal. The others, I don't know. I'll, I'll put them down in the description. You can look them up yourself. In any event, those have been your strengths and your weaknesses. Let's move on to those born on this day. That's right. See who shares your company. And with uh, diving into those born on this day, I like to examine something that I find important, and that is examining your passions. All too often to get out in the world and ask folks what they do uh, and if they enjoy it, more importantly. And a lot of times they don't. And who can blame them? You know, we get into this world, get out of school, you got to get right into a job. And you don't have time to put into work to figure out what you enjoy in this life. And if you do uh, know what you like to do, well, a lot of times you don't know how to make money at it. So anyway, I think this is the perfect opportunity to uh, not only see who shares your birthday, but see what got them in the book, you know, what got them, uh, got their stamp on the cultural zeitgeist, if you like. And maybe we can take some inspiration from what they did or, uh, you know, what put them in the book, if you like. Any of it. Let's get into it, shall we? Uh, we start off with a Jesse Jackson, the African-American political leader, Baptist clergyman, orator, and the Rainbow Coalition president and founder. We also have Eddie Rickenbacker, or Bacher perhaps, top U.S. World War I flying ace, an auto racer, and the owner of the Indianapolis Speedway. We have Damian Runyon, a writer and a journalist, Sigourney Weaver, the film actress, uh, Cesar Milstein, a British Nobel Prize winning molecular biologist and an anti of antibody production. We also have Matt Biondi, a U.S. Olympic eight gold medal winning swimmer, uh, Chevy Chase, who is a uh, a comic actor or a comic TV film actor, Klaus Kinski, Polish film actor, uh, Billy Kahn, C O N N, uh, world lightweight, uh, world light heavyweight champion boxer, Paul Hogan, the Australian film actor of Crocodile Dundee fame. Uh, we have Ruben uh, Mamoulian, a, th a theater and film director of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, Juan Piron, an Argentinian dictator. Oh, you can't always have the, uh, the tried and true, right? Uh, Meyer Levin, a writer of Compulsion. 
and Bill Elliott's an auto racer and a two-time Daytona 500 winner and a NASCAR champ. We also have Pepper Adams, a baritone saxophonist. I'm telling you, the jazz singers, and uh, they always seem to have the cool names, uh, though it doesn't say jazz in here, but I'm, I'm assuming by the saxophone there. Uh, we have uh, Kichi Mayazawa, um, Japanese prime minister. We also have Helgi uh, Tomasen, a ballet dancer. We have Ray Reardon, a Welsh world snooker champion. First snooker person in here that I've read. Uh, we also have Rona Barrett, Hollywood gossip columnist. That's the first one of those, too, I think. And Ernst uh, Kritschmer, a, G a German psychiatrist. <laughs> Psychiatrist and typologist. All right, hey, um, I butchered a few of the names in there for sure, and the the weaknesses. So the, how do you pronounce the, the words for the weaknesses? So since we butchered some things, let's do some butchering. That's right. Hooked on phonics didn't work for me. That's just it's not done in malice. It's just I can't sound things out apparently. Any event, uh, that about rounds out your birthday read, taking us out of those born on this day, except to say. Your season is fall. Your sign, once again, is Libra, of the Libra II period specifically, and your quality and elements is Cardinal Air. And this has been October 8th, the day of high romance. I don't think we really found a correlation with the heavyweight belt there, but no matter. That's right. This has been The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers. And I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in diving in further and picking up your own copy and supporting the channel at the same time. Supporting Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers. Without them, this wouldn't be possible because <laughs> I don't know the first thing about astrology. But in any event, hey, this thing makes a perfect coffee table book. Uh, it's going to be great for parties, getting the conversation started. If you have a hard time getting the ice broken, Hey, this thing is going to do it in kind. It's even going to break some walnuts if you need something like that. Specifically, if you get the hard cover there. But hey, again, it's not important. What's important here is wishing you a happy birthday. That's right. I just want to say happy birthday. And I said, if this finds you late, hope you had a happy birthday. But for everyone else who just joined us to celebrate, hey, I just want to say thanks for coming in. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I hope to see you for your birthday read. All right, unless we forget. Your daily numbers, that's right. Your double four for an eight. Uh, after you get out of jail, get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. All right, once again, happy birthday. Take care of yourselves.